how is everyone? Good. Bye. Good. How is everyone? Bye. Bye. Loud. We are loud tonight, right? Um, welcome, welcome. Um, so the way the night's going to work is I'm going to introduce Carmen Navas Oliver, who's the founder of She Growls. She's going to talk a little bit about the amazingness that's coming tonight, and then we're going to have open mic, and then we're going to have some headliners, and it's going to be a wicked night, yeah? Woo! Yay! Cool. So um, we were chatting beforehand, and the first time I met Carmen was back, I think, in like 2015, maybe. <laughs> Um, we both did like the slam for the roundhouse um, in the heats and it was wicked and I knew right then that she like lived and breathed poetry and she's wicked and I'm really excited for tonight so make loads of noise for Carmina Mass Oliver! Thank you, that was such a lovely intro. Um, so, um, just to tell you a bit about She Growls, so it's a feminist arts night that tends to now have an emphasis on poetry, which is now based at the Poetry Cafe in Common Garden, and uh, previously it's been on tour for the anthology that was published by Burning Eye Books, and so this is the second tour, this time wanting to connect more to people living in and around um, each area that we're going to. So, um, yeah, so the, there's another thing that I need to mention as well, that we do have a mailing list and uh, we've got the She Grouse anthology that's actually currently being made into an audiobook. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, then please do sign up to keep updated. Um, and yeah, so this is, I think, the fourth day of the tour. Um, so despite this being kind of one of the biggest venues, it's the, the smallest audience at the moment. <laughs> but that means that we appreciate you being here even more. Um, so thank you for your presence tonight. Um, so I'm going to kick off with some of my own poems. Um, so this, um, I'm going to do a couple from uh, my little pamphlet. I still have a few copies. It's limited edition as well. Um, it was uh, done by Nasty Little Press um, quite a few years ago now. And it, the, I'll do the first poem from it. It's called Computer Generated Images. We grew up on HTML. Love was a cartoon heart, pink or red, we dissected some cold slab of meat in science labs. And with that, every Disney film turned dirty. We would publicise our most private thoughts, kidding ourselves it was poetry when it was catharsis at best. Love was chat rooms and MSN. Love was taken back to the days of courtly love. Letters on screens and stomachs would flip, not with a touch or grip of your bedroom blush. Of your, um, of your crush, but a bedroom blush. And the flash went from offline to online. Love was romance, love was distance, love was a flicker in the periphery, but it always ended in a request for a naked photograph. ASL, mylinku.com. We grew up on HTML. We edited our lives to make them look better with CPR and high contrast with hearts and smileys. We proclaimed our friends as the best in the world, placed them on pedestals, but cried to ourselves when we weren't number one on their top friends list on MySpace. We grew up on HTML, but we never truly understood the language. We communicated a love that was not love at all. Um, this next one, I think I'll just do a couple more from here. Um, this one uh, is just titled Chroma 2013. The rush of the lapping waves of the sea, the sounds of shells, smell of salt is where the humdrum left behind I can just be. The horizon before me I can stare, watch where the sea meets the sky and then it leaves, nowhere I'd rather be than standing there. Watch the others run to the water, their wetsuits mean they can plunge into the sea without that sharp English coldness, the leaves of winter gone. I tiptoe down to where the others are, pebble stumble and stare and shriek as waves impact, happy to be. And there's a strange feeling when you let things be. The waves hitting you as you submerge there in the deep blue, each pebble step a stare, taking you further into the Norfolk Sea, simple pleasures in this coastal town where we wear our happy hearts upon our sleeves. Here, 
filled with hope, each one of us believes in miracles, a future where we'll be together. Now this will always be where I rem remember feeling so alive, there laughing in tragedy's face, throwing seaweed at each other as I smile and stare. The sun spreads over our skin, I stop and stare, daydream across the ripples, breathe in air so fresh and clean. In this moment I can see what's important in the world is to be in a place just like this beach, which relieves you of the tension in your body, the wear and tear of the day, the working days, the days where your time is simply not your own. So stare wherever you are, eyes closed, and you're there. Even when you're walking knee deep in leaves and snow, find a place to go and just be. Picture the sun and the sand and the sea. This is the place where melancholy leaves. Paint with your eyes as you stare, let it be. There's a whole world out there for you to see. So I think um, I'll just do one more poem and then we'll um, move on to hearing more of Charlie's poems and to the open mic. And um, so this one is kind of one of the more feminist poems of the book. Um, it was written as a kind of anti-page three poem and it's called Paradise. The curve of her breasts reflects the eye of the camera lens. Flash, flicker, flash, fake hair, fake eyelashes and lashes of vinegar, with a chest good enough to eat chips off. And it's glam, 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 or I am who I am. But how did she get here? Because there were girls daydreaming over coffee tables, the morning paper telling fables about a future of padded bras and saving cash, another scalpel, another gash towards perfection. Her body, an investment. And it's not her fault a woman's worth is determined since her birth to be her body, to be her sex, to be questioned on her self-respect whenever she stands naked in a room full of walls with clothes as soft as lamb's wool. A girl always at the gaze of the guys. Wolf whistled on the streets since she was 13, see who needs an education and got a pair of double Ds. Now, she needs to reclaim her body. Shower away your judgement because your eyes made her dirty. Fought her into thinking she cared, you cared about the caption beside her head. Fought her into thinking this was a choice she made and now her bed is laid and she thinks this is the only way to assert her power in the world. And as her picture is spread, like butter on breakfast toast, there is born another girl, dreaming of paradise, wondering what she wants to be when she grows up. Thank you. Um, so just um, a quick note as well that um, anyone who comes up to the mic that um, I am recording a few bits throughout the night, so if there's anything that you don't want going up, um, on the internet, please let me know and I'll avoid that happening. And um, yeah, so I think um, I might say a bit more later on about different things, but for now, um, before we welcome Charlie back up, I'd like everyone to um, join together in a she growls tradition. So you're going to have to be really loud here. <laughs> um, so on the count of three, I would like you to all join together in a communal growl. <laughs> One, two, three. That was pretty good. I'm um, hoping we'll have, have some more growls throughout the night. So, for now, please welcome Charlie back.